Hey, you guys, thank you so much for joining me today and a big welcome to those of you who are here for the first time. I am Amy Gretchen and today I am working on some December Daily. This is December Daily 2020 and I am going to be working on day 12. So before I get started with day 12, I'm actually going to finish up day 8 and day 9. So for some reason I did not finish this up in my album the first time around and I just figured that I would start off this video by showing you how I'm going to complete this. If you have not seen any of my 2020 album, I do have a video showing you a walkthrough of what I have completed. I have days one through 11 done, which is why I'm working on day 12 today. And what I'm doing right now on the screen is I've got two tags that I am adhering back to back. And I realized when I was doing this that I've got that you know, white tag that's coming up out of one of the craft tags. And I accidentally put adhesive all along the back side of that craft tag, which was going to keep my list that's on that white piece of paper from being able to be removed. It was actually going to adhere it down on the inside. And I definitely did not want that. So that's why I ended up putting that text weight piece of paper over the adhesive just so I was able to then move that piece of paper in and out. So I adhered everything together and this time I got it done successfully. And you can see that I also put in a transparency piece of paper, just a strip that would allow me to then punch into the transparency and give me a little bit more room so I didn't have to punch the holes right into those craft tags. And that I felt like it would, would enable me to have a larger list, but also I thought it would actually look a little bit better that way. I've been doing that a lot more in this album and you'll see that I'll do it with day 12 as well. Um, just so I don't have to punch directly into my photos or my tags or whatever it is that I'm working on. So the last thing that I'm doing here is I'm just adding the twine and adding the ribbon and then I am going to be good to go with day eight. It definitely came together really simply. I'm not entirely sure why I didn't finish it last year. So there you go and I've got that card on the back side of day nine as well. And it was awesome that it fit perfectly. I definitely did not plan that, but it was awesome how perfectly it fit together. All right. So I am working on day 12 and this story is all about this walk that I took with my puppy. And it was just really about slowing down and seeing the magic because I believe there is magic everywhere. And so that is a little bit about the story that I wanted to tell for this day. You can see that I've enlarged the photo to go on the back side of the other photo, which was, I believe, five by eight and a half. So it actually is a little bit larger than the page protector, which is actually 1.25 inches. And it was a mistake that I did the first time around with the photo of, you know, my studio. And then I just decided to match it for this, you know, for this day as well. And it's not a big deal that it, you know, ends up being a fourth inch or excuse me, an eighth inch bigger on either end. But I don't think it's that big of a deal, especially once, you know, all the pieces are together. I think it actually is kind of nice to have things that aren't exactly, you know, in the same size as the page protector. So then the next thing that I did is I took an element. This was one of the digital files that said magic. I know it came with December Daily, but I can't remember if it was from Paisley Press or not. And I decided to make a cut file out of it and then I just cut it with my silhouette. I cut multiple and I'm stacking them on top of one another just to allow for some dimension. I was thinking about just putting the or printing this onto my photo, but ultimately I really wanted there to be some dimension on this page. And so that's why I went ahead and cut it out with my silhouette. And now I'm, like I said, I'm just stacking them all together. I think I cut out four and ended up only stacking three because I felt like, you know, three looked really well together. You can see that I don't have the top of that 
I, I'm trying to think of what they call it that has escaped my mind, but I decided that I would end up putting a star embellishment. I have a ton of star embellishments and specifically I was thinking of the other day I used the Studio Calico kit. I think it was from August and there was some small chipboard stars and I thought that that actually would be perfect. You can see it's now on the screen. There was a gold one that I was thinking about using and then also a red one. You'll see I kind of go back and forth a little bit just to see which one I like better. But it's always fun to be able to add little elements in where you can, you know, kind of create something that's a little bit different that allows something to pop off the page. All right, so now I'm going to create the pocket that my journaling is going to sit into, and I'm using some graphics matte paper. It kind of feels a little bit like transparency, but it is matte, and you actually could use this for transparency. It'd be really great for that, and I will have it linked below. So I've slowed down the footage here because I want to show you a little bit easier how I'm creating this pocket. So the first thing that I'm doing is I'm measuring out the width. So I've determined that I want a half of an inch for where I'm punching the holes. And then for the tabs, I wanted three eighths of an inch. So that turns out to be three fourths of an inch, I believe if I'm doing my math right. So I did four and a quarter uh, width. And then for the height, I did, um, I wanted there to be at least three inches for the pocket to sit into and then a little bit above. So I did probably like six and um, three quarters of an inch. And you can see right now, uh, lengthwise, I am scoring down at the three inch mark because that is going to be my pocket. And then I'm going to start creating my tabs. So on the longer portion, so it'll be three and three quarters portion, I am cutting at three eighths of an inch. So I'm cutting down to the three inch mark where I had the score line, and then I am just going to cut off those edges there. So you can see where it's three inches, it's a little bit wider, where it's longer, it's a little bit skinnier. So I've got kind of got this T shape. And then where I've got my tabs, I am scoring at three eighths of an inch on both sides because that is what I'm going to fold in and that is where the adhesive is going to be that's going to put keep this pocket all together. So now I've got my scores and you can see that I'm just going to fold it. This paper is a little bit harder to score, it definitely I had to kind of score several times and kind of press it down. It might be easier to just use paper or maybe a thinner vellum. I didn't have thinner vellum or I would definitely have used the thinner vellum. This was all I had, so I just went ahead and used this, but you could definitely use any kind of paper that you wanted for this. You could use a great pattern paper for this, which is something that I considered also because I, you know, I thought maybe it would add to that black and white photo, but ultimately I decided to go with a transparency because I really wanted to be able to see that text through. So now you can see that I've scored down or kind of like pressed down all those score lines and now I'm trying to figure out what I want the top to look like and I know I want to notch it a little bit and I did end up cutting a little bit off the top and I believe I will cut a little bit more off the top so you could probably originally just do six and a half inches instead of six and three quarters of an inch and then I'm just you know, making a rough line here that I'm going to cut off so it's not so boxy. I want it to feel, I guess, a little bit more like a tag or something like that. I didn't want it to feel so boxy. And so, you know, those glassine bags, it's kind of going to look a little bit like the glassine bag. So I'm kind of cutting it at an angle at the top. And if you wanted this to be more precise, you could definitely measure it, but I just decided to eyeball it and thought it ended up working okay. Then I'm adding the adhesive to the tabs and then I'm going to press it all together. The one thing that I wasn't 100% happy with is I feel like there was definitely a lot of space, but I think it just goes with the territory of making these pockets. 
So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to punch my holes. So I'm just using the page protector to kind of help me figure out where I wanted the holes to go. And then I'll end up just punching it with the hole punch. So that is how you make the pocket for your journaling to sit into. And then of course, the next question is, how am I going to embellish this pocket and how am I going to add my number onto this day? So the one thing that I really struggled with is I knew that I wanted some color here. And so I really liked that 12, that it was red and you know, that it kind of stood out from the black and white photo. And then of course, all, you know, the white journaling and how the pocket is white-ish kind of see through. And so I was I was really struggling to what I wanted to do and how I wanted to add this, but I didn't love the that star that says the quiet December day, how it was gray. I didn't love it how it was stacked up with like that it was on the pocket and then the number 12, the red number 12 was stacked above it. Like I just didn't love how that looked. It kind of I didn't like it. So you'll see that I'm doing it again and I'm looking at it and I just didn't like the way that ended up looking. And ultimately, I really thought that the gold looked really classic and really beautiful against that black and white. So that is what I went with is this version, which is the gold numbers. And then I end up putting the star on there. And what I'm doing right now off screen that you cannot see is partially taking the adhesive backing off the star. So I didn't want the top part of my star that was not going to be touching anything to be um, sticky. And so I just used an X-Acto to kind of cut off that release paper so that it's still stuck to the top. Now I may end up adding some pattern paper to the top of that, but I haven't yet. So I think it might you know, determine what I end up doing the following day. So we'll see, we'll see what I end up doing for day 13, but I may end up just leaving it so that it looks white on the back. So now that I'm done with the pocket, the last thing that I have to do is, well, I have to put on the word magic, but I'm going to adhere the photos together first. I thought that it would probably be easier to adhere it before I started adding a bunch of dimension. And of course, I felt like I couldn't get this plastic on or this transparency on so that it was even. And so I ended up pulling up one of my one of my mats that has a ruler. This one was from Heidi Swap. It's not available anymore, but We Are Memory Keepers does have mats like this available. And the thing that I love so much about this is it's magnetic and it allows me to um, have a ruler that's magnetic. And so I would definitely say this is an awesome mat to use. But at any rate, I used it to help me just get that transparency uh, half of an inch away from the photos. And it worked out perfectly. Got it exactly where I needed it to be. And now I'm the last thing I'm going to do besides punching the holes is add the magic word right on to the photo. And I'm sorry that I'm um, off screen a little bit here, but you definitely get the idea of, you know, what I'm doing, just adding some adhesive to the back. I really like doing the liquid adhesive because it is so helpful in trying to get things you know, in the exact right place. And then I'm adding the star down and then I'm just using a transparency and marking where the hole is to kind of help me get the hole in the exact right place. So that is going to be it for day 12. Just a very simple story about taking a walk and finding some magic in a very ordinary day. And I will say that these are the types of stories that I love to include in my December daily because there's all those activities and there's all those events, but there's also these little pieces of magic in December daily that I just love being able to include. Anyway, you guys, that is it from my December daily. Thank you so much for joining me. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below and we will see you next week for another done by December. Bye guys.